I just want to read from um, Galatians 5, and um, this is verse 1, and also, um, yeah, verse 12, or maybe 13, I guess. Um, let's read verse 1, Galatians 5, verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the li liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So the context is about the law, where um, you know, to the Galatian church, he's writing, okay, you started off in the spirit, now why are you going back to the law? We are going back to you know circumcision and all that, because some of the false brethren had come and, um, and started spreading that kind of a teaching. And so they were you know slowly going back to, okay, uh, in order to be saved, you needed to be circumcised and you know, to keep the law, etc. So he's saying, you know, in that context, but then um, this can be applied in other areas as well. You know, we've been, um, been given the liberty, Christ has made us free. So do not go back and be entangled in the very same thing that Christ has set us free from, right? Um, do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Okay, so uh, stand fast. And that word stand fast, means stand firm and persevere, you know, continue to persist in standing firm uh, and keep that keep that freedom or keep that standing which has been given to you, right? Um, and then if we go down to verse 13, it says, for you brethren have been called to liberty. Now, you've been called to freedom, liberty. Uh, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, right? You've been given, you've been given this freedom, you've been called to this freedom, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity, you know, as a provision for the flesh, but through love serve one another, right? So, so this opportunity, which means that this opportunity, I mean, this freedom, this liberty that we have. Um, in Christ, this grace that has been extended to us, um, you know, do not use that as, that as an opportunity. You know, we've been delivered. I mean, we've been set free from the consequence of the law, so we don't, you know, um, the ritualistic things of the law, and so do not be entangled again with, uh, with the things that we have been set free from. And the other thing is this. This liberty is something that you've been invited to. This is uh, this liberty that we have, and because of the grace of God, is something that has been given to us. But do not use this as an opportunity, which means that there is a tendency, there is a potential to use it as an opportunity for the things of the flesh, right? Because the spirit of God, you know, the, the flesh lusts against things of the spirit. Right? There is that constant struggle. So the flesh needs to be crucified. The mind needs to be renewed. Uh, so do not use this freedom as an opportunity, as a as a provision to plan to sin or to give in to the appetites of the flesh, but stand firm in the freedom and through love serve one another. So this is a reminder for us to continue to live in freedom, right? um, to not be entangled again, uh, to not to take things um, for granted, the things that we have been delivered from, right? So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this reminder, Lord, not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Yes, Lord, we thank you for the privilege, for that. we thank you for the freedom, Lord, that we are experiencing today because of the finished work of the cross, Lord, because of what you did for us, Lord, because of the grace that you extended for us. We thank you for the freedom. Lord, many times we try to, we, we tend to take it for granted, God, the very things that we've been delivered from, oh God, the things that we were oppressed with, Father God, we've been delivered from it, Lord. And we knew what it was, God, the, to, be, to be delivered from it, God. The freedom that we experienced, Lord, the joy that we experienced, the, the, the peace that we experienced, God. And so, Lord, Lord, may we be careful not to go back, not to be entangled in those very things again, Lord. Father, we thank you for this uh, exhortation and warning, God. And also, God, we thank you, Lord, there, 
for this exhortation, Lord, that uh, Lord, that we've been called for that freedom, that we've been invited, we've been called for this freedom, to live in that freedom, God. And so may we be careful not to use that freedom as an opportunity, as a thing to plan, to fulfill the desires of the flesh, God. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and the glory. We pray all this in the powerful and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, so last class yesterday we looked at uh, you know, we just went through those steps, the path of uh, restoration for emotional um, you know uh, wholeness, right? and uh, that is something that we can do uh, personally from time to time, um, just to re recalibrate ourselves, right, and to see you know are we living in that freedom? Are we or are we, have we gone back into some kind of, you know, maybe because of some challenge, maybe because of something, have we kind of gone back to live under that weight again, right? Um, so sometimes it, the things are so subtle, right? The drift is so subtle that we don't realize it. Right? We've given into maybe some kind of a fear, we've given into some kind of a, you know, deception, and uh, pretty soon we just see that, uh, you know, we're just living under the weight of that whole thing, right? So uh, from time to time, we can actually uh, recalibrate and uh, uh, see, reevaluate and recalibrate, right? Um, and take a spiritual inventory, uh, take stock of how things are, and you know, actually use this method to very uh, in a detailed manner, you know, to to submit, to surrender, to renounce, to repent, to release, right, forgiveness, and so on, and uh, and continue on. Okay, so um, having looked at that, uh, there are some things that we need to have. Now, this is an ongoing thing, of course, and uh, you know, from well, uh, maybe we can do it whenever we feel prompted, or maybe you know, on a on a monthly basis, even you know, just a suggestion. But there are certain things that need to be part of our lives as an on on an ongoing basis, okay, on an ongoing as part of a lifestyle, okay. Now, you know, when we uh, probably when we have some kind of a sickness and we ask, uh, we go and visit the doctor and and say, you know, doc, this is what I'm, you know, sensing. This is what I'm feeling. Uh, maybe you know it's, it's something to do with uh, your weight, or something to do with some some other health parameter. And uh, you know uh, the expectation is that the doctor will you know, check and say, okay, um, maybe you need to take this pill, maybe you need to take this medicine, you know, take it for maybe you need to take the shot injection, and, and you'll be fine. You know, just wait it out, rest it out, you'll be fine in a couple of days. You'll be fine. You'll be back to normal. But instead, when the doctor says, you know, you need to make some drastic changes to your lifestyle. You know, you can't eat this stuff ever again, or you need to, you know, get moving. You need to be active. You need to do this as part of your lifestyle, uh, which means it's it's it, it needs to become part of you every day, every week, every month, every year. It's for life. You need to make those changes. Right now, that's a that's a difficult thing, right? Uh, and then we, we we sometimes want you know I, I wish we had you know some kind of a uh, you know a, a fast fast track remedy, uh, but then the doctor says no this is what it is it needs to be part of you, uh, and uh, it needs to be part of your life, and you need to make these changes for things to get better, and right? for things to or the things that have you know maybe the changes that are happening in you, in your body, for it to stick, you know, for it to become like a permanent thing, you need to make these changes. Okay. So similarly, you know, when it comes to emotional health and emotional wholeness, inner wholeness, see that uh, there are some things that need to be part of our lifestyle, okay, which means that these things need to become part of our you know, our lifestyle change. And when we say lifestyle, we are talking about uh, we know, we, the picture that we have is that of a marathon, you know, runner. Right? It's not a hundred meters dash where you finish, and then you know you're you're resting. It's it's an it's a long term thing, 
right? So when we look at that, we see that certain things need to be long term, right? Uh, it, it needs to be a long term change. Okay. So what are what are some of these? First thing is to sever, which means to cut off all sinful things, all ties that hold you back, that drag you back, um, that trouble your 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 soul, trouble or bring a weight, bring us under oppression, create a stronghold. Now that needs to be severed. That needs to be cut. Okay. What is it that's causing you, that's draw, dragging you back to your sinful pattern? What is it that's dragging you back to that downward spiral of maybe fear or oppression or sadness? And what is it? That is dragging you back. Now well, that um, that so that is something that we need to understand. What is that trigger, and how can I avoid it? Like how can I cut it off? Right. Um, if you look at Matthew chapter five, the Lord Jesus says something uh, you know very very harsh. It seems it's it's like a surgical a cutting away, a surgical action. Right. Uh, Matthew chapter five and um, you know, verse 27 onwards, he says, if you, you know, you, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for the whole body to be cast into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you than one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. So he's talking about taking action and taking action in a very surgical manner, right? In a very strict, decisive manner. And describes that cutting away. Right. So he's saying that if if this is causing you, you know that this is what is causing you know you to go back. This is what is causing you to live in that place. This is what is dragging you back. You need to cut it off. Right. You need to cut that tie. Um, by that we mean that let it not be part of your life. Right. When we cut off a you know a, maybe a tumor or something, it's not part of the body. Right? It's not part of the body in order to you know cause further damage and pain and you know maybe grow. So the Lord is saying that you know it needs to be cut away. Okay? And we look at a couple of other scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33, and uh, and also you know 2 Corinthians 6. Um, so this is what we see. Um, let me read 15 and verse 33, where it says um, you know, evil company corrupts good habits. Right? Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. So maybe you've got something good going on in your life, um, you something, you know, there's something healthy going on in your life. And, uh, you know, there is this possibility that the kind of fellowship that you have, the kind of company that you keep, well, that influences your habits or the worse, not for the better, but for the worse. So whatever conversations you're having in that, you know, in that kind of friendship, whatever that company that you keep, uh, whatever you're discussing, whatever you're, you know, uh, enjoying together, maybe that is corrupting. That is corroding the values, corrupting uh, whatever good that has been established. That whatever good schedule, whatever good routine, whatever discipline. That is corrupting, right? So um, evil company you know, corrupts good habits. So that's that's another thing, right? So which means that that needs to be, in order for uh, us to be set right, well, what is corrupting needs to be removed. Right? And again, it's not an easy thing right? to distance away from maybe friends or certain kinds of people who are influencing us for the worse, but it needs to be done. And, and in the words of the Lord Jesus, it is like you cut away what is causing you to sin. And so it is painful, right? To cut away a, a limb, to cut away an eye, you know, 
uh, it is painful. So in similar manner, you know, as a figure of speech, if if that is what, if that habit of that, you know, company is what is causing us to sin, then, you know, we need to cut away, and it it can be painful, right? That's the reality. It can be painful, but it needs to be done in order for us to actually get back to health. Right? Uh, Second Corinthians six verses fourteen to eighteen, right? Um, so uh, yeah, Paul is actually talking about uh, the the company that the Corinthians were actually keeping, right? The association, the kind of association that they had with it, uh, uh, those who were unbelievers, those who were um, not believing Christ. So he's saying, you know, um, verse twelve, you are restricted by your own affections, and then he goes on to say in verse fourteen, do not be unequally yoked. Okay, so yoke is a is a tie, right? It's a close association because you're yoked together to go in the same direction. You're yoked together to carry the same load and you know purpose and direction and all that. You're yoked together. You're tied together. Right? So he's saying, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And then he says, what fellowship? What communion? And right, what koinonia has righteousness with unrighteousness, with um, you know, and he gives several scenarios. What koinonia has light with darkness, uh, Christ with Belial, and uh, and so on. What agreement has the you know, um, what part has the believer of the unbeliever, and then what agreement has the temple of God with idols? You are the temple of the living God, and so on. So, um, kind of describing, you know. Uh, this kind of a fellowship, this kind of a situation. So when we think of this, we say, okay, yeah, it actually has no, you know, there's, there cannot be any communion, there cannot be any fellowship, um, there cannot be a yoke of you know, these kind of scenarios, light with darkness, and, you know, temple of God with with the powers of darkness. No, there cannot be any communion and fellowship. And uh, so, in similar manner, since there cannot be, it has to be cut away. Right, so um, to save it all times, you know. So it has to be an ongoing. It has to be a lifestyle. So it can't be. It can't be an event. It can can't be just one time thing, and then we go back. No, it has to be something that we cut. Okay. Um, the second one is again uh, something that we know, but to renew our mind with the Word of God, okay, to make new our thinking and our thinking pattern. Right. See, all of us have some thinking patterns, whether we are conscious of it or not. Right. So, when whenever there is some kind of a, you know, whenever we face, let's say, a fear, you know, there is a thinking pattern which leads us to action. Right. Whenever we um, we are in a sim, in a in a particular situation, we find ourselves, you know, in a challenging situation or, you know, any any circumstance, there is a thinking pattern. Right, and that thinking pattern has come because you know of, of uh, I mean maybe years and years of thinking on those same lines, and that changes, that shifts and changes according to what we consciously, you know, allow our mind to be influenced with. Maybe we read a book, maybe we read, a, you know, watch something, and be inspired, motivated, and that changes our pattern of thinking. Right. So here, the word of God is very clear. That there will be transformation when there is change in thinking. Right? The key to transformation is uh, thinking differently, right? Or renovating our thinking. Right? So Romans chapter twelve, verse one to three, we know that. Right? Be transformed. But first of all, he says, do not be conformed with the things of the world, but be transformed. Right? Conform is to fit in. With the pattern, or be you know forced into a certain pattern. So do not be conformed to the world's way of doing things, but be transformed. Right? Let there be a change, a uh, you know, metamorpho, meaning let there be a drastic change. And that drastic change can only happen when there is a change in thinking, when our mind is renewed, when our thinking pattern shifts and changes. According to what? According to the Word of God. Right. When we renew our mind to the truth of God's word, when we renew our mind to the values in God's word, so which means that um, okay, you know, whenever uh, I need to do certain things, and 
uh, what what does the word of god say about it when we time, spend time reading the word of god when we when we spend, spend time we are actually being exposed to the truth we are exposed to the values uh, in god's word and how god values things what does he esteem what does he not esteem right what is truth what is a lie what is good what is not good so we are exposing our minds to it and when we expose when we expose you know and we we take in um, we are actually changing our thinking and it's a conscious act right and some of it can be you know uh, need not be a conscious thing we just continue to read and without our knowing you know um, our desires are changing right because we are actually exposed to the truth of god's word the beauty of god's word the holiness and the power of god's word right? it's changing our our emotions changing our appetites right and some of it it just happens right um uh, and in the presence of god as well right we are in the presence of god we are worshiping and there is a change that happening to our thinking right but some of it has to be intentional right some of it has to be uh, what we see in uh, romans chapter 8 right romans chapter 8 um uh and um sorry yeah gone to max so we yeah romans chapter 8 and uh, verse 13 right if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live so there is this putting to death if you put to death which means you think you take action and you put to death you decide not to do you decide that this has to end right so there is that conscious intentional change in thinking change in a decision right um so you decide if by the spirit you decide right and then things are changing let's look at first peter chapter 1 and verse 22 as well okay first peter chapter 1 and uh, verse 22 since you have purified your souls you know being the truth through the spirit that right? in sincere love of the brethren love and the fervent pity with the pure heart so you have purified your souls in obeying the truth so in obeying the truth of god's word and god's principles and precepts and instructions there is a purifying that happens there is a changing that's happened to the thinking you know it's like a brain is being washed and uh, i think it's it's you can say it's brain washing that's happening in a, in a good way brain wash by the word of god you know, many, many times we brain wash is actually used in a negative sense right but it's it's brain wash in a very positive way by the word of god and intentionally consciously consciously you know not against your will but with uh, you know the participation fully of your will of your thoughts right and uh, that needs to happen now that's a lifestyle change as well when you say that okay first lifestyle change cutting away of things that are dragging not going back to it not indulging in it second lifestyle change renewing of my mind and the word of god says that this is this is it this is how things are this is how things ought to be then you know, we change our thinking accordingly Okay, the sooner we do that uh, the the sooner we will see that transformation in our lives okay the moment we hesitate and we reason out and we we kind of argue uh, then it's going to take time right so that's the second thing thirdly you know developing a godly lifestyle growing into christ likeness what we see in second timothy 2 that we will grow into the image of christ to grow into um to be like christ yeah. let's look at that verse second timothy 2 and um, verse uh, 20 uh, 20 onwards um talking about the vessels uh, verse 21 if anyone cleanses himself from the latter he will be a vessel for honor sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every 
good work. Okay, and um, verse 22, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Right. So this, this is again, pursuing righteousness and, and faith and love and peace and everything. Um, it's an ongoing thing. Like, um, so, uh, sorry, uh, I think I, I read Second uh, Timothy. Yeah, Second Timothy chapter 2. Yeah, so um, so it's an ongoing thing, right? So we we it, it's something that we make a, a change, right? Where where it becomes part of our life, right? So with all those who call on the Lord, out of a pure heart, saying, "Okay, this is what I'm going after. This is what I'm pursuing," right? Um, so that's the third thing. The fourth thing is that we develop skills uh, in areas that we might consider to be well non-spiritual right and that actually impacts us impacts us in, uh, in our spiritual life impacts us you know when we look at our overall you know our emotional health and and stress levels um, and, and so on right what are some of those skills communication Communication, um, poor communication. You know, if you struggle with communication, it creates a lot of stress, right? Yeah, I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to communicate. I'm I'm not being understood, uh, and we are struggling to communicate in a clear manner. So, it's good to develop a sk uh, the, uh, skills in those areas, right? in the area of communication. So we can maybe it's written, maybe it's verbal. Um, you know, to to develop that, so when we, we are able to, we, we we are able to understand others. We are able, we are uh, and and are being understood. Then it reduces a lot of stress, stress, you know, and uh, affects us uh, uh, positively in our in the realm of our emotions, right? Then relationship skills, right? How we relate to others, right? Again, that's a. Uh, uh, yeah, that comes naturally, of course, based on our personality and based on our temperament. We relate to others in a in a certain way. But if we would intentionally develop some, you know, skills in this manner, okay, how we relate to people, how we can relate to people, how how not to take offense, how not to, you know, how not to do certain things, right? How to respect um, one another and so on. So that also, you know, helps us, and it's again a lifestyle change. And when we manage our time well, when we manage our money well, uh, our physical health, you know, exercise and eating habits, and uh, you know, all that unhealthy things like, you know, late night binges and you know, uh, all those things, um, turning to eating to fulfill an emotional need. You know, that's a that's something you know we want to because eating definitely when we it's it is nutritious food uh, creates an emotional response right and uh, uh, some we th there is a you know your body is feels pleasurable uh, receives a certain kind of pleasure when we when we eat food right so if we kind of feeling low and in order to feel good we start to eat. Okay, that becomes a problem. Now, every time we feel low, we want to reward ourselves with a chocolate or an ice cream, right, or some kind of favorite food, and we we keep it there in our house, and it's all there, you know, some snack, something. So it's not that we are hungry. It's not that your body needs it, but our emotions are low. Our emotion need is there, right? So when we when we eat out of our emotional need, then there's a problem, right? Because every time we feel low, every time we feel stressed, we we want to fill that with food, and that affects us physically. That affects us physically. So our physical health goes for a toss, and to compound it, if we don't have any physical exercise. Right? 
uh, physical exercise. We don't move around much. And then, you know, our lifestyle becomes pretty sedentary, right? You know, the nature of work could be like that, where we maybe, maybe, maybe we need to sit for hours together, maybe to study certain things, maybe to, you know, work on certain things, maybe to work on some reports or whatever. So it becomes very sedentary. So we need to intentionally work at moving, right? Moving our body, you know, making sure our muscles are healthy and strong. So which means we need to exercise our muscles. Um, maybe, you know, uh, uh, our legs, leg muscles, our hand muscles, and, you know, different areas of our muscles, and which really affect our joints, right? When our muscles are strong, then they are able to carry our body weight better. Uh, our joints are actually not impacted so much. Um, there is less stress in our joints, you know, like knee and ankles and so on. So because the mu and and back muscles, right? So the muscles are, uh, you know, uh, stronger in our back and all that. And then, so we realize, okay, if the muscles are strong, then all those nagging pains and everything kind of disappear, right? So, eating, you know, cutting off emotional eating, and also, you know, indulging actively uh, in some kind of an exercise, maybe for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, making sure our heart rate is good, and, you know, all that, it really helps, right? So, and this is again a lifestyle change. Like, we, I can't do it for one week and then just leave it, right? We see the benefit of it only when we are consistent in it over a period of time, right? So to look at it, to make that thing, okay, I'm going to do this long term, right? And uh, the benefit is, again, long term, right? So we're not looking for quick fixes, you know? We do it for a week and then we'll see, okay, is that a change? You know? And then if there, if there is change, I'll continue. Otherwise, I will not. Well, that's the wrong uh, mindset to have when you're going in for these things. If it's a lifestyle change, it's a it's a long term thing. So, so the thing is to you know to tell ourselves, you know, I'm going to do it because it's good for me, and I'm not going to look for you know I'm not going to evaluate things in a short term period. I'm not going to look for short term rewards. Whether there is a reward in you know in a week, in a month, six months, in a year, or not. I'm going to do it. You know, that's the mindset to have. Okay, and then we will reap the reward. Okay, so uh, so these are things that we ought to do in addition to, you know, those evaluations, and then just sitting before God, sitting before the Lord, and uh, allowing Him to um, to to kind of uh, let His light, you know, pierce the darkness. Right, let His light. Here's the darkness in our soul. We're not talking about the area of our soul again, right? And uh, and cleanse and make whole. And sometimes we don't realize it. Some things are so deep rooted. So you know, we we love the light of His truth to pierce that to destroy those things, right? And we can do it however at times we want to. Do. Um, yeah, so we can do it from time to time. Okay. So um, so we we'll, we we'll just pause here for a bit and then. Um, you know, if there are any questions that you might have uh, before we go into our next uh, topic, um, any questions, anything that you might want to add, you know, you can feel free to ask or share. Okay, anything at all? Yeah, um, yeah, Jeffrey. Yeah, yeah uh, we talk about uh, developing a lifestyle, so uh, it comes under a schedule, right? But but if if you ask me, uh, I mean, it's very hard to follow some schedules to make something a habit, uh, mm. even though you think like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do by seven o'clock in the morning. You may do it on mm. the first day, but not on the second days. Uh, sometimes you may do it for at least three to four days, but not on the seventh yeah. day, eighth day. Then. And automatically, if uh, if you are suffering emotionally, uh, I think it is somehow, uh, even though we decide on one day, somehow these thoughts comes up and 
and the whole schedule actually messes up and you just have to start from again okay let's make a new schedule or something so yeah uh, i just want to know what is your best advice uh, to make something a habit like what helps mm. in that what how can you make it more effective too yeah yeah so the thing is that say so, see so to understand that we are not alone in this you know so um so the lord is there to uh, and his you know indwelling presence to to really help us with this right so we can ask for ask him to remind ask him to prompt ask him to you know to just help us along the way and um, so so that's that's a big thing that's a, so we, it's not that we are not depending on our own resources to do this because actually we are leaning on him his strength to enable us but having said that it's you know we make that choice right he will he will remind he will prompt he will you know uh, help uh, but ultimately we need to our will needs to be you know, come to that place of strength to design you know, that's the thing so that's that's the first thing you know um and the second thing is you know no matter what setback to really get up and start doing it again right so many times okay we say okay uh, there may be you know let's say for you have a diet or something you know you you know you slip up and then you say okay i slipped up so let me just give up okay so that's not the thing right you might slip up once maybe twice but the thing is to get back and get going again okay so you will not be perfect right so there might be setbacks there might be times when we give in there might be times when we you know when we fall but the thing is to rise up again right so that's the thing to say i i'm going to rise up i'm going to make these things stick so that's the second thing the third thing is to do it in the context of community you know, maybe there is you know, to to enable uh, or to have an accountability person you know, like a, like a you know close friend confidant who can you know hold you accountable right and that's a great way to do it maybe it's a you know group of people or just one other person um with whom you can actually share in confidence and uh, you know you, you whom who's reliable whom you can trust and uh, and do that so with these three things you know there could be more with these three things in place um we will actually get stronger and stronger and you know like normally you know people who study human behavior they say in 21 days a habit actually can um can actually stick right so so the thing is that um you know if we can stick for 21 days if we can go for 21 days then um you know then it becomes uh it becomes a muscle memory as they say as they say you know so where your thought patterns it's like you know if you look at a field and you see uh, certain you know certain places where the plow has gone you know it has made a mark and uh, you know it's gone over and over again so there are these ridges that are formed and so also in our in our thoughts and emotions right so that we've done this over and over and uh, and we slip into that and it's a good thing right uh, we slip into that in a good way and we so it is reinforced and we are strengthened right so so that happens it becomes consistent and it becomes a you know strong thought pattern uh for us right yeah thank you pastor right so we have a question from divya you know is the main purpose of communication in a relationship for one to understand the other and be understood how can that be effectively done okay so the main purpose of communication so um so you're asking that in the context of um uh, communication skills right uh, to develop a communication skill yeah yes yeah so um so the main purpose of communication yeah in a relationship to 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 understand to and so um so how can uh, that be done effectively done the thing is language of course uh, there's a basic thing so um the way the language is used right is it um, uh that's a basic basic thing you know the words that i choose the words that i use you know am i communicating clearly you know so 
it will uh, or have, have my language skills do they need to be improved upon you know so um so that is one thing the other thing is also uh, so so which means that when i'm you know verbally or maybe written correspondence you know am i using language in the right way right or am i being specific clear or am i using a lot of words but then it's it just comes out as very something very very vague right how can i be more specific how can i be more concise and to the point it could be writing it could be verbal so that the other thing is also you know when it comes to relationship and communication especially verbal communication you know am i understanding this you know, am i a good listener right so listening skill is also very important you know uh, but I'm, I, I could be there physically, but the person could be say, sharing something. But if my mind is preoccupied and the other person gets irritated because nothing has gone in, right? So the person asks, okay, what did I say just now? Um, <laughs> you know, you've not taken anything in. And the person feels disrespected, right? So that is also another thing. Am I hearing, or am, am I just imposing my thoughts, imposing whatever? You know, is that the agenda? I just want, or even the person is saying, you know, I'm thinking of solutions. I'm thinking of, you know, how to, you know, respond to this. Then it becomes an issue, right? So, so, so these are these are some ways by which we can actually um, effectively um, communicate. And um, so, communication is two ways. So, when we improve our listening skills. We will be able to communicate it. Communicate. We'll be better communicators. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Okay. So, any other, any other thoughts? Any other questions? Um, okay. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Can you find out one more? Uh. I just want to ask about a situation. So, so I know a girl. Uh, so, she she is a Christian, uh, but uh, she, I mean she was she was going well in the Lord. But uh, so what? These traumas were really different for me when I came to know about that like, she's having a trauma, and it's very different for her also. So mm. she's like, I'm I'm into Christ. Why why am I having a trauma about something that happened years ago? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's putting her into a guilt, uh, like uh, I'm suffering, uh, but but I know Christ in me. <laughs> so she's like, uh, it's making her feeling guilt, like I couldn't live the life that God has got for me uh, because of what she's going through. So she actually wants to come out, and she's trying her level best to come out, mm -hmm. uh, but she still feels like uh, she's struggling with it. Uh, she couldn't uh, move forward in life. And, Mm. So for something like that, uh, what we could actually do? What could I actually tell her? Because uh, I mean, it's it's not like she's an unbeliever. <laughs> like mm. I can go and tell her like, do 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 that. Uh, she yeah. has believed in the Lord. She knows the Bible. Mm. Uh, what are the things over there? She knows, and she used to tell me like, I know cast. I should cast off my burdens to God. <laughs> but mm. I just couldn't. The things are okay. very very hard. So so what should I mm. tell her? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's a that, that's a tough thing, right? A person is uh, is a believer, and then and that and that can be very very frustrating as well. You know, I I know that this is the truth, but I'm not able to make certain changes. Okay. So actually, the next thing that we are going to look at uh, will really help strengthen that part. You know? So 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 uh, you know, some of the things to uh, really ask is. Um, you know, has has she forgiven herself? You know, maybe it's something to do with forgiveness, right? So has she forgiven herself? You know, you say this thing comes back over and over again, or you know, forgiven herself, or maybe forgiven someone else, right? Whoever caused this trauma. Maybe it was self-inflicted. Maybe it was you know, you know. so. You know, has she forgiven herself? Right. So you know, this is a big thing. Because if uh, if you're still holding on to that guilt or holding on to that shame, it's a very subtle thing, right? And then it's it's actually affecting our relationship, relationship with others, relationship with God, 
you know, our own internal relationship. Like for, for a long time, I suffered with guilt and shame because I didn't do well in my 12th standard, right? And, and, the, and the thing was like, a lot of, I did extremely well in my 10th, like got district first in certain subject and all that. Um, so for me, uh, you know, the, the, the guilt was this, you know, uh, good uh, opportunities were given, you know, potential was there. It wasn't like, but I messed it up. Like, so, uh, and uh, so that thing is really eating me up. And so, uh, you know, every time I would just shrink, right? Uh, when I see successful people, I would just shrink and you know, a lot of things. So, uh, but I had to come to a place where uh, I said, okay, you know, I, I need to move on, right? It is affecting, uh, it is affecting my present now. I need to move on. I need to take some steps. I, I cannot let this affect. So, uh, you know, I had to take those steps. And and uh, what really helped was uh, knowing that God loves me. Okay. And I uh, know these things that we're going to look at my identity in Christ. Okay. What has been done on the cross? It's not some theory, uh, it's truth. And uh, I need to really embrace this truth. I need to really make it part of me daily, intentionally. Initially, it's going to be difficult, but then this truth changes. Right? It, it sets me free. It's going to strengthen me in the inner man. So, um, so, so this this thing is um, something that you know maybe your friend has to come to terms with, and um, yeah, maybe some kind of a Counseling would also help, where the person, where the counselor, can just ask some questions, you know, pointed questions, and 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 this person is able to realize, okay, this is where the problem is, you know, uh, this is where the problem is. I'm, I seem to be going back to this, and I need to do that. So, um, so the Lord will, you know, kind of empower her to make that choice, and once she makes that choice, then will experience freedom yeah so i don't know the specifics of it so that's why i'm just sharing you know um yeah thank you best yeah okay. so uh so i guess we'll, we'll stop here but we're just going to look at um you know when, when we're journeying you know we're using that word journey because it's uh, you know it can be an encounter and it can be you know done with right emotional wholeness can happen but it is also a journey. It is also a process, and we should not, uh, you know, minimize that. Saying that okay, this is better. That is not better. No, it is. So it is a journey. It's a process. It's which means that it's a it's a series of steps, right? Um, sometimes it's it's just one step, and sometimes it's a series of steps. It's a path where path is made of many steps. So a series of steps. So it's a journey into emotional wholeness and. This journey into wholeness, um, into emotional healing and, and healing for our emotions and, and all that, um, there's certain things which really help build strength, right? Help um, even sustain that healing and wholeness that we have received through Christ, right? Um, and, and first of all, and the first one is the love of God. You know, this love of God. Uh, we've heard so many times that God loves us, John 3.16. We've learned it when we were probably growing up as kids. And but this love of God is something that is so powerful. I, it can, uh, if a person receives, understands, receives experience, it can change, revolutionize a person's life. Second one, our identity. Identity is something which is, you know. The shaping of identity, our, our you know our self worth, um, you know where we draw our our self worth and importance and everything from, so very important again, and it's also closely tied to uh, the love of God, you know, receiving that love. Third one is, you know, what has happened in the past, what we cannot change, uh, what we cannot address, we need to release. We need to release, consciously release, and say, make peace in, with ourselves and say, okay, that is done. 
Now I can't do anything more about it. I'm moving on. Right? Paul says, right, forgetting those things that are behind, I press on. I press on towards the head. Uh, these are powerful words coming from you know Paul because uh, he had seen much, he had experienced much as a person who persecuted the church. He might have seen lives. Yeah, he he actually firsthand saw um, Stephen being martyred. He was there in agreement with what was happening, and like that, I'm sure many lives would have been you know killed, chained, you know, separated, parents separated from children. So many families, you know, lives destroyed. Now he he can't do anything about it, right? Uh, and maybe even in ministry, he experienced some challenges, some failures, etc. But then he says, you know. I press on, forgetting those things. I press on to what's ahead uh, for the upward call of God in Christ. So, you know, that's something that we need to resolve. And as we journey into emotional wholeness, right, releasing the past. Um, yeah, so we look at these things uh, and um, in our next class, right? Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, God bless. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor.